Good day, guys. Good day, guys. Hope we're all good. Welcome back. Uh, as we do the candlestick trading Bible decoding. So uh, I believe we left off on page 78, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to resume from page 79. Let me just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, we're resuming from page 79. So now we're getting into the thick of things, like we're going into the strategies just to put everything together and the tactics you can use. So this includes your, your it's basically like your trade management uh, from your setup to where you open your trade, your stop loss, and your take profit, which is your target. So we're going to continue trading strategies and tactics. In the last chapters, you learned three important aspects of price action. The first aspect is the market trends. You know how to identify the market trend using multiple time frame analysis. You know how to differentiate between trading markets and range bound markets, and you understand how each market moves. The second aspect is the level. You learned how to draw support and resistance and how to draw trend lines. This skill will help you better enter the market in the right time. The third aspect is the signals. You have seen different candlestick kind of patterns. You understand the psychology behind its formation and the message they send you. These three aspects, which are the trend, the level, and the signal are what we use in our trading approach to make money trading any financial market. Uh, let me just change my color of this highlighter. Okay, there we go. These, uh, I mean, that when you open a chart, you try to answer these three important questions. What is the market doing? Is it trending, consolidating, or is it in a choppy market? I don't know why this color keeps going to blue. Let's see, let's see. Okay. If... If it is trending, you know how to identify if it is in an uptrend or in a downtrend. If it is in a range market, if it is a range market, you will see that it is trading horizontally between two boundaries. And if it's a choppy market, you close your chart and you stay away. Okay. Um, let me see. I wanted to highlight something here. All right. Anyways, that's fine. What are the most important powerful levels in the markets? If the market is trending up or down, or if it is ranging, you will try to find the most important support and resistance. These levels are the best zones where you can buy and sell the market. Number three, what is the best signal to enter the market? The best signal to enter the market means the right time to execute your trade. And this is what you will learn in the next chapter. All right, so before we proceed, I'm just going to illustrate something. So when you open your chart again, I'll just repeat uh, for those who have been left behind. Uh, when you open your charts, what you want to see is, or what you want to check for is, is your market going up, right? Is it uptrending or is it coming down? Or is your market moving uh, in a zone, like um, not breaking any highs, not breaking any lows, like in a range? Or is your price just choppy. So if your price is choppy, you already know we do not trade, right? There's no setup. If your price is um, trading in a range, what you want to do is to mark the first two highs, which you see the first two highs, which are visible. Then you just draw them into the future, right? Do the same thing for the bottom side. The first two lows, which are equal or almost equal, you draw your zone. So you want to sell at the high, you want to sell at the high, right? At this area, you just wait to see if price wants to break out maybe, but if you get a signal, the signal candle like a pin bar, your RR candlesticks, your bearish engulfing, then again, you can sell. Opposite is true for buys. You just want to wait for price to hit this low. If they come back again here, you want to wait for a signal for you to buy it back again to the top side. But if they break, you want to wait for a possibility for breakout and a retest or to check if the price is a fake out whereby they break out and they come back inside the range. Okay. If it's uptrend or downtrend, you simply want to draw your, your, your support and resistance. Then you want to enter when price is hitting resistance zones. And if you're using moving average, if there's a moving averages, if there's a moving average, Let's say there's a moving average in there. I'm not sure if we've touched moving averages already. 
But anyways, if there's a moving average, you also want to see if they don't come to a zone, to a resistance zone, usually they will react off a moving average. So you can still take your sell there. It will be very valid. Uh, the opposite is true for buys. You just want to mark your highs. Uh, again, you want to take your entries when price hits support. Uh, like this, if they don't hit support, sometimes there will be a moving average. Sometimes they come slightly below. So basically, that's it. So that's like the general approach. Uh, you just have to then get into the charts and practice, practice, practice until you are profitable. All right, let's go to the signals. Excuse me. The pin bar candlestick pattern. From my own point of view, this is one of the most important uh, candles. Excuse me. It's one of the most important candles which you find on your chart. If you see it on a zone, do not hesitate to execute the pin bar. All right. This pin bar candlestick, it's one of the most important candles. So let's get into it. The pin bar candlestick is one of the most famous Japanese candlesticks. It is widely used by price action traders to determine reversal points in the market. In this section, you will learn in detail how to identify potential pin bar signals and the conditions needed Right, these conditions which need to line up for it to be valid. You do not just trade any pin bar, right? You just need to have certain confluences which line up before you execute. So in this section, you learn in detail how to identify potential pin bar signals and the conditions needed for high probability setups. A pin bar is a chart candlestick. It is characterized by a very long tail that shows a rejection and it indicates that the market will move in the opposite direction. The area between the open and close is called the real body. Typically, all pin bars have a very small uh, real body and a long shadow. A bullish pin bar is known for its lower wicks and the bearish one is characterized by longer upper wicks. The color of the candle is not quite important. That's one thing you should also note. The color of the candle is not really quite important. However, bullish candles with white real bodies are more powerful than candles with a real black body. On the other hand, a bearish pin bar with a real black body are more... Let me repeat that. On the other hand, a bearish... Okay, it's their mistake. On the other hand, bearish pin bars with real black bodies are more important that the ones with white real bodies see how pin bars look like below. So depending with the colors of your candles, uh, if your bullish candles are green, then uh, this body will be green, right? But in this book, buying candles are like this. They are white, right? It will be something like this. Then uh, the, truth is, the truth can be said for, for bearish pin bars. You see, it will be, depending with your color again, it can be red, uh, which is the general color, or it can be black or whatever color you're using for, for your for your bearish candles. How to identify pin bar candles, candlestick setups. To be honest, quality price action setups don't exist in the market. That's the first thing you should know. Quality price action do not price action uh setup don't exist in the market simply because you know price does what it does. You simply have to trade accordingly. So to be honest, quality price action setups don't exist in the market because you see that sometimes you can find a high probability setup. You feel very excited about it and you take your trade with confidence. But at the end, you'll be frustrated because the signal fails for unknown reasons. That happens a couple of times because the market doesn't move due to pin bar formations. What moves the market is the law of supply and demand. Let me give you an example. If you identify a quality pin by candle near a support key, right? If you identify a quality pin by candle near a support key level in an uptrend market, this is a powerful buying signal to take. You shouldn't ignore it, but if the amount of money that the buyers put in this trade is less than the amount of money that the sellers risk in the same trade, the market will not go in a predict predicted direction. Okay, so let me just mark until here. Yeah. Okay, so everything I'm highlighting, that's just the main main points uh, which you need to also highlight on your side and just take note of that. If the signal fails, it does not mean that your analysis is wrong. 
or pin bars don't work. It is just because the market didn't validate your decision. Therefore, you accept your loss and you look for another opportunity. You may ask yourself, why should we look for quality pin bar setups if the market doesn't respect them? As you know, trading is a game of probabilities. There is no certainty. This is why you should evaluate your pin bar setups from multiple angles. And the fact that you are looking for quality setup means that you are trying to put the probabilities of success in your favor, which is the right mindset of successful traders. To determine whether or not a pin bar is worth trading, this price action signal should respect the following criteria. The pin bar formed in bigger time frames, such as the four hour or the daily time frame should be taken into, into consideration because if you look at smaller time frames, you can easily spot a lot of pin bar signals. These setups should be ignored because smaller time frames generate a lot of false signals. Let's check the illustration below. All right, there we go. We are in an uptrend. This is the daily chart, right? You can see uh, those who use moving averages, probably they will be like a moving average somewhere there. Not sure which one, but you know, all moving averages work no matter which ones you use. But uh, for our particular um, strategy and the way we see the markets, we mainly use the 13 EMA. Uh, we use the 50 EMA. We use the, the 200 and the 800. Right? These are all exponential averages, moving averages set to close. Right, That's one thing I should just point out because when I usually show my charts, you see these moving averages. So those are the values I use. So you can see here, we had a nice pin bar. We are in an uptrend, all right? So the price just continued to push up. And again, price, you should understand it moves in, in waves. And this is a clean uptrend, right? That's a clean uptrend as you can see, okay? So I hope that's clear as well. And it's a higher time frame. you can see is the daily. The pin bar formed in line with the direction of the market is more powerful than the one which is formed against the trend. If you identify a clear trend, that means you know who is in control of the market. The formation of this candlestick pattern with the trend makes it so effective. See the chart below. So on the chart below, we can uh, all see and we agree that from about this area, price started what? Just pushing up, steady pushing up. This is what AUD and ZD. Uh, steady pushing up, steady pushing up. As you can see, it's a, it's a clean uptrend. So once you see that you're in an uptrend, you start looking for your pin bars. So starting from there again, you see there's one day, one day. Then there's one here, right? You can see these ones are against the trend, like this one. If it's against the trend, it becomes low probability because we are in an uptrend. So don't consider that unless it lines up with something okay so any pin bar against the trend uh we do not take those okay then if you get a pin bar going with the trend like this one this one right you take your trade it will be valid it's just as simple as that and it's mainly um a game of patience if you see this is a daily chart so it takes a bit of time for you to get the pin bar but when you see it you should execute your trade. Um, do not uh, miss such trades because usually they, they give like a big move. You can see after this pin bar, we had one, two, three, four, about four days of rise. If you are day trading, you just look for your buy trades uh, within uh, these daily candles or inside these daily candles. Uh, same applies here. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three. It's actually a lot of days. And because this uptrend are uh, actually continuing, so this was more like a swing trade. Okay, so I hope that's clear. You can open the charts, then you can look for such pin bars. I think I'll open my charts just now, just to so that we can get examples. Okay, as you see in the chart above, bullish pin bars that were formed in the line with the uptrend work, and they should be taken into consideration. But the bearish ones that were formed against the trend should be ignored. The anatomy of pin bar, pin bars is important as well. You have to make sure that the candlestick is a pin bar by looking at the distance between the real body and the tail. Pin bars with longer tails are more powerful, right? The psychology behind the pin bar candle formation. So before we get into the psychology, let's just uh, switch to the charts. Let's see if we can get an example with pin bars. 
from a high time frame. This is a volatility index chart. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So do we agree that on this part, the first thing we need to do is agree. Right? Do we agree that on this part we are in a downtrend? Right? Once we agree that we are in a downtrend, uh, what we now are looking for is pin bars. Okay, there is one there, there is one there. Uh, there is a couple there, couple there. Uh, where else? Where else? This one is not so clear. Mm, this one, the the tail is not so long, so it's a low probability one, right? And uh, this one, I wouldn't really want to trade. I'll give my reason why. So the pin bars I've mentioned or I pointed out, let's just talk about them in greater detail. So this one here is valid. You can see price just continue dropping from there. One, two, three, four, about five days of drop before they like sort of uh, pull back. But as soon as they gave that one, they also gave another pin by here, but it's against the trend, meaning we can simply ignore it. But you shouldn't ignore this candle, like just blind, like blindfold and say it's a pin bar against the trend. I should, I should ignore it. Because sometimes it will be on a what? It will be on a zone, excuse me, it will be on a support zone and it could mean price is now reversing. So that's one other thing you should take note of. Uh, let's see, then these ones here, they are all in line with the trend and you can see price continued pushing down. Uh, this one, low probability, but it's on a moving average. Price again, continued pushing down. This one qualifies also as a moving average, as a pin bar. Uh, we also had this low probability one. Why I'm saying it's low probability is because the body of the candle is almost equal to the what? To the week. So this is low probability. You want to see a pin bar like this. Right? The, the, this week has to be longer. So I hope that makes sense. This way, examples of uh, of a downtrend. Let's see if I can get somewhere with, with an uptrend. Let's see here. Mm, let's see, let's see. Okay, from about this area, okay, we agree that we are now in an uptrend because price is creating higher highs, um, higher lows and, and so forth. So once we agree that we're in an uptrend, we're looking for pin bars. Okay, price moves, price moves, there's really nothing clear. Go, oh, actually you might take this one. That's very valid, you can take it because from there, one, two days of rise before the pullback. Uh, then after that, on the moving average, we had one. This is also like a doji type of candle right there, but it's also valid. We've got one there again on a moving average. Uh, this one is valid, even though it's a low probability because the body, again, it's a bit what uh, big or equal to the week. What you want to see is a buying pin buy. You want to see a long week and a small body. Basically, those are the things you look for from a high time frame. So you can look for these things on a daily you can look for them on a on a, on, a, on an H4 chart. The higher time frames always have more power than the smaller time frames, right? So we're going to switch back to the book and continue. Okay, so pin bars with longer tails are more powerful. The psychology behind the pin bar candlestick formation. Pin bars are formed when prices are rejected. This rejection doesn't indicate a reversal signal. Because this price action setup can form everywhere in your chart. Okay, you should take note of that. The most important areas to watch when trading pin bars are the major key levels, such as your support and resistance, your supply and demand zones, and on moving averages, like I explained. Uh, the formation of the this candlestick, the formation of this candlestick chart pattern in these levels give a clear idea about what happens in the market. If the rejection was Near support level, for example, this is an obvious indication that the bulls are more powerful and they are willing to push the market to go upward. See the chart below. So here's a clean example. Uh, we are in an uptrend, right? This high here was broken. Price created a what? A higher high. We are we agree we are in an uptrend because this area was broken, right? As soon as they break here and create a higher high, we know we are in an uptrend. We simply have to wait for a signal. So price pulls back down to this support area, gives a pin bar. Soon as it closes, you are a buyer. So obviously you have to wait for like your stop hunt on the next day, which is this week here, 
then you look for entries inside this week to take uh, the best buy entry. Then your stop loss always has to go like below uh, the pin bar. But I think that's explained in the next few pages. So this was a valid what? Uh, pin bar on a support level and the price just continue pushing up. All right, let's continue. If the formation of this candlestick occurs near a resistance level, it indicates that the bears reject prices and prevent the bulls from breaking this level. So this means that sellers are willing to push the market downwards. See the chart below. Okay, it's just the opposite of the bullish move. And everything is clear here. I don't think anything needs explanation. We're in a clear downtrend, right? This is zone we market into the future. Price comes back to that zone, hits us with a pin bar. We are in a downtrend. We take the trade, we execute. All right, pin bars like these, you don't take like these. You don't take, because why? The trend is pushing down, okay? So always make sure you try to look for high probability setup. If you understand the psychology behind this price action pattern formation, you will be able to predict what is likely to happen in the future and you make good trades based on high probability pin bar signals. Trading the pin bar candlestick with the trend. If you're a beginner trader, I highly recommend you stick with this trend. You stick with the trend because pin bars that are okay in trading markets offer good trading opportunities with a high risk to reward ratio. What it simply means is once you see a pin bar on a higher time frame, in a training market, the reward uh, compared to the risk, right? The reward will be great compared to what uh, you will be risking. That what this statement simply means for those who are still new to trading. Okay, when you master trading it with the trend, you can then move to trade range bound markets or even counter trends. This strategy is simple. You start by identifying a clear uptrend or downtrend and you wait for a pin bar to okay after a pullback to a support or resistance level. See the example below. Uh, more or less the same uh, with uh, the last example. You can see this one is an H1. So as you do multi-time frame analysis, once you get comfortable with trading, if you're a new trader, you can still apply the same concept on any time frames. But you should also know uh, the pin bar on higher time frames, um, it's it's more powerful. It carries more weight, right? Unlike pin bars you see from smaller time frames. But anyways, we are in a downtrend. We break the level, which becomes a resistance pin bar, and you can check the drop, right? Risk to reward. What this simply means is this is your risk for this trade, and you can check how big the reward is. So these are the type of trades we always look for when we trade on the markets. The figure below shows how this price action signal works if it, if it is traded with a trend. As you can see, the price was rejected from the resistance level, which indicates that the bears are still in charge of the downtrend. The formation of the pin bar indicates the end of the retracement move and the beginning of the impulsive move at the resistance level in line with the downtrend. This, sorry, this is a high quality setup because of the following because all the following criteria is respected, right? The first thing is the pin bar is well-formed and it is in line with the direction, right? You check, you'll be writing these things on your, on your trading journal. Once you see that candle, these are the notes you need to write on your trading journal. journal. The rejection occurred at a major key level, which represents a whole point in the market. In this example, it was a resistance level and the risk to reward ratio is good and it is worth trading. Sometimes even if the market is trending, we can't draw support and resistance level because the prices move in a certain way, which we can't spot static uh, key levels. Okay, If you're in this situation, you can use the 21 moving average, which will act as a dynamic support in an uptrend and a dynamic resistance in a downtrend. Right. So before we go to the charts, I want you to... We're just going to mention the type of moving averages I use. You can use this. It's it's fairly fine. It's just the same thing. The main thing I'll just em emphasize is you need to understand your moving average. If you are a beginner trader and you have moving averages on your charts because you saw them on some video, understand how it works because all moving averages work the same, especially if you understand them. 
So it doesn't matter whether it's the 13 or it's the eight or it's the five or it's the 20 or it's the 50 or it's the 200. But again, what I can also advise is usually uh, on charts, there is a smaller moving average and there is a bigger moving average. Moving average. So sometimes you see traders, you might have a 21 and a 50, a 21 and a 200. Uh, a 21 and an 800 because you want to just see to get like a crossover to understand where your trade is going at the same time so it's not limited to just the 21 because if you see on my charts i use the 13 for this particular same example or same illustration i use the 13 ema okay so we're just going to get into the charts and explain um if you're in this situation you can use the 21 moving average, which will act as a dynamic support and resistance in an uptrend and dynamic resistance in a downtrend. See the illustration below. So what they simply trying to say is sometimes your price will be moving down, right? They hit a zone, they come, they break it, but they don't, uh, they didn't like follow through here. So if you draw your zone into the future, let's see this one again. This one, maybe this one. These are lower lows which you want to use as a resistance. But you see this type of market on this type of example, it's what we call a variation of the downtrend. Sometimes price does not hit the resistance. Resistance. Uh, let me just check. There's a notification on my phone. Uh, just give me a moment. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, guys. I was just checking a notification because usually when I trade, again, one other thing which I'll advise for you guys is to use TradingView as your platform to analyze uh, your charts. Instead of using MetaTrader 5 um, or MetaTrader 4, or so, yeah, MT5 or MT4, you can opt. Of course, you can use them to execute your trades. That's still fine. But in terms of analysis, you can... Make use of trading view. Right, the link will be on the description. You can make use of trading view. Why I'm saying trading view for chart analysis is simply because of this. On trading view, you can set alerts. So when I got that notification, it's coming from trading view. So it allows you to mark your chart, right? Let me give you an example while we're here, anyways. So let's say this is the four hour chart, right? Price has moved. Um, let me look for a better example. Let's say when you came to the charts, price was here, right? And you know that okay, this price is moved and there will be a pullback, obviously. So price can pull back to two things: either it will pull back to the resistance level or it will pull back to the moving average. So based on your price, you can set an alert on trading view. You set an, an alert for it goes off like a notification, just like any notification on, on your phone. Then it gives you, you just edit it to write something on the on the caption. So it will tell you, let's say price is now on, on, on support. So you can say USDCHF is now on support. So when you get the notification, you open your chart. Then you check if there's any signal 
right? If you open and you see there's no signal, it means basically you simply have to wait because again, you have another alert, let's say near the moving average. So that alert will go off again. When it goes off, you come to your charts, you wait and see what your price is showing you. When you get a pin bar signal, then you execute. Okay, simple is as simple as that. Then you can also set an alert for your take profits, your sell limit, but whatever you can set alerts so that you don't spend the whole day looking at the charts. You just set your, your, your limits on whatever you're trading, then you can do other things. And when price gets to your zone, you get the alert, then you can get in front of your trading workstation and you can wait for your particular signal uh, to show, then you can execute your trade. Then you can set an alert for your TP as well uh, to just get a notification that your TP has been hit or your stop loss has been hit or something like that. So trading view is also another application which you can use especially for your analysis. I hope that helps. So just going to continuing with explaining this, I think I had explained. Uh, so we're just going to continue. As you can see in the chart above, the market was trending down using the 21 moving averages, plus it helps us identify dynamic resistance. What they simply mean when they say dynamic resistance level is, a resistance level isn't when price is doing this. Right, these lower lows, this is from previous lessons, I'm sure we are all on the same page. You draw that zone, that's a resistance level, right? that's a resistance level. So when they say dynamic, it simply means that this resistance level now, it's not fixed just to one area. If you have a moving average coming here, it means this area also qualifies as a, as a resistance area on the moving average, but now it's dynamic because it's flexible. The moving average is flexible, right? That's the definition of dynamic. It means it's not fixed basically. So I hope that helps. So helps us identify dynamic resistance levels and high probability pin bar setups. See another chart below. Uh, this is an example of, a, of an uptrend. You can see where the pin bars are right on the EMA. Uh, this also qualifies, I can take this one. But again, it, it comes with screen time because remember not all pin bars are the same. These variations right now you can see this one this one uh this one they all different but they all pin bars so with screen time you will get to understand which ones to take and which ones uh not to take and for this particular example we are just looking at the ones on moving averages you're not looking at anything else all right so don't get too confused all right, the four hour chart above illustrates how the 21 moving average could help us find key points in the market. When prices approach the moving average, the buying pressure takes place in the market and the price goes up. The pin bar signal is clear on the chart because the trend is bullish. <clears throat> the price action setup has a bullish anatomy as well. And the rejection from the 21 moving average is a signal to buy the market no matter what moving average you're using. If you're using the 13 and you see a pin bar, execute. If you're using the 10, some people use the 10 EMA, some people use the eight, uh, some people use the 21, right? The, it's, it's simple. You don't really have to stick to the 21, but if you are a new trader, if you're a beginner trader, just put the 21 on your chart and back test, right? See how price reacts on that moving average, right? When we identify the trend, uptrend or downtrend, and the level, okay, we are on trading tactics. So I didn't even mention this topic. We are on the trading tactics now. This is basically like your approach to what you'll be seeing to on the charts or your approach to, to having what we call a setup. When we identify the trend, uptrend or downtrend, and the level of support and resistance, I think this is just a definition of trading tactics. And we find a pin bar near these levels in line with the direction of the trend. The second step is to know how to enter the market based on this candlestick. So while it's with the, you don't just enter because you've seen a pin bar. So it will be explained on the few notes below. According to my experience, there are different entry points when it comes to trading pin bars. It all depends on the candle 
it all depends on the kind of anatomy, the market conditions, and your money management strategy. The aggressive entry option, this method consists of entering the market immediately after the pin bar closes without waiting for confirmation. Okay, so these are the types of, uh, of traders. Again, this boils down to individuals. It's not something I can teach you. It's not something which anybody else can teach you. Being aggressive or being a safe trader it's, it differs from individual to individual. And you can use both concepts as well, depending on the setups you see. So on some setups, you might be aggressive. On some setups, you might try to be a little bit conservative or wait for the safe entries, which is going to be explained uh, on the notes below. The aggressive entry option, this method consists of entering the market immediately after the pin bar closes without waiting for a confirmation. This strategy will help you catch the move from the beginning because sometimes the price goes higher after the close of the pin bar. And if you are not in the market, the trade will leave without you. Okay. Uh, this is the daily chart. We're in a downtrend market. There is the pin bar entry after the close of the pin bar. That's an aggressive entry. This is an example of an aggressive entry. All right. You can see price hit the zone. That means now this zone is what? The support zone. The zone was broken. We agree. Price came back into the zone, which is now a resistance zone, and gave us a pin bar. Soon as it closes, you open your cell. Okay. Stop loss goes way above the pin bar. Then you do your risk to reward. If you are doing one is to two, twice your risk is your TP. So if twice is somewhere there, your TP will be there. Right. If it's three times, then your TP will be somewhere here. Just something like that. Okay, so that's the illustration of this is a downtrend. Support becomes a resistance, okay? The chart above shows how an aggressive entry could help you to execute your trade in the right time without being left by the market. As you see, we took this trade because we had three important elements. The first thing is the trend. The market was trending down. In this case, we look for selling opportunities. The second thing is the level. In this chart, we had support level that becomes a resistance. The third aspect is your signal. A clear pin bar was formed after the retracement back to the resistance level. When you have these three elements in the market, you just place your trade after the close of the pin bar and your stop loss above the long tail. Your profit target will be the next support level in case of a downtrend. These three elements are quite enough for you to find high probability entries in the market. So <clears throat> when you trade, trading, of course, it's not easy, but it's it can be simplified just by looking at these things. You want to look at the at your trend. Are you going up? Are you coming down? Are you sideways or are you choppy? You want to look for your levels, support and resistance or the moving average. And you want to get the candlestick, which is your signal, pin bar or whatever other candlesticks, candlestick um, from the ones we learned. All right. The conservative entry option, this strategy consists of entering the market after 50% of the range bar retracement. This strategy sometimes will work and it gives you more than uh, 5 is to 1 risk to reward ratio and sometimes the market will leave without you. Okay, It happens. Sometimes you might wait for a safe entry and you don't get it. The price just like accelerates and it goes without you. Okay, let's look at the example below. So safe entries is when, okay, we agree, first of all, we are in a downtrend because we've broken this what support zone, which is now resistance. Okay, so we wait for our price to come back to our resistance area, right? Price sort of moves sideways, then they eventually come back and they hit us with the pin bar. Right? Remember this pin bar is green. You can see it's white. It means it's a green candlestick. People might actually be buying, but because we... We have read this book together and we have explained what to look for. You should know that as soon as you see a pin bar in a downtrend, you're looking for sales. And again, remember the aggressive entry is right here. That's where you take yourself. But a safe entry is when price retraces halfway of the pin bar. So halfway is right there. Uh, then you take your entry. As you can see from there, now your stop loss is there. The price just dropped. Okay, so this is like a safe entry whereby you wait for price to pull back 
to at least halfway of the pin bar. But sometimes, again, as you saw on the uh, aggressive entry, sometimes price will show a pin bar, then they will just drop without retracing halfway. The markets can do that. So you shouldn't feel bad if you miss a trade or you shouldn't chase price again if you miss a trade. So the illustration above gives us an idea about the power of conservative entries. As you can see, this entry method helps us decrease our risks and increase our rewards. The trade above is more than five to one risk to reward ratio. One trade like this every month is quite enough to generate a decent income. See another chart below. While is we here, let me explain something, what they mean. Like one trade is enough um, to generate a decent income. What it simply means is you don't have to trade every day. That's the first thing. You don't have to chase trades. You do not have to be on your charts always. Just be patient enough. Look at your chart. Look at what you're trading. If you're trading multiple things, again, it goes back to the trading view platform. Once you set your limits, you can relax. As of course, as long as you've got data, then your notifications will come through. Then you don't have to see it on the chart always. Right. So that's again something we should actually look into. So let's see, let's see. Uh okay, this is a, a buy example. Right. We're going up. We've broken this level. This was actually a resistance level, but because we've broken, it's now a support level. We hit a pin bar, price retraces halfway uh into the zone again or halfway of the pin bar. You take your trade. Remember, many people will actually be selling here. Why? Because this is a selling candle, right? But if you understand that you're in an uptrend, ignore this. Look for a buy entry. When people are saying sell, 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 you just relax, you smile, you buy, put your stop loss, wait for your trade to play out. Right? So again, remember we're in an uptrend. This candlestick doesn't mean anything. This pin bar here. Do not trade against the trend, right? Just be patient, relax, wait. And you see this trade just continued pushing up. So one of the drawbacks of this entry option is that the market sometimes doesn't retrace to the 50% of the range, which will make you feel frustrated because the market will move to the profit target without you. There is no wrong or right uh, entry option. Uh, they both work great, but with screen time and with experience, you will be able to decide whether to trade aggressively or conservatively. I think I just explained this uh, when we were about the uh, trading pin bars with confluence. Let me see which page, which topic comes next. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to go through all these pages. Okay, let's go through this topic. And we'll stop on the next one. <clears throat> okay, trading pin bars with confluence. Confluence simply means if you see a pin bar, wherever you see it, uh, it has to line up with something. Line up with something. If you've got pin bar lining up with like two, three, four things, five things, as an execute your trade uh, with, without doubt. A trade can either be a, a loss or a profit. That happens. If it's a loss, the main thing is, is your loss small. Keep your losses small. You can have six losses, two wins, and still be profitable. Six losses, four wins, still be profitable. Five losses, one win, still be profitable. It's all a matter of minimizing your loss, like calculating your risk. That's the main important uh, factor. So trading pin bars with confluence. Confluence happens when many technical indicators generate the same signal. This trading concept is used by price action traders to filter their entry points and spot high probability signals in the market. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or advanced trader. Trading with confluence is a must because it will help you focus on quality setups rather than quantity and you to enhance tremendously your trading performance. So everything here is just something which must be highlighted. Confluence means, means combination or conjunction. It is a situation in which two or more things join or come together. For example, uh, if we are looking for a pin bar signal, we need to find other factors of confluence to confirm our entry. We are not going to take any pin bar that we find on the chart. So these are the main factors which we need to look at. <clears throat> so the first aspect is the trend. 
it is one of the most important factors of confluence. This is the first thing that most successful traders look for on their charts. You can't trade any setup without identifying if it is in line with the direction of the market or not. A bearish pin bar in a downtrend is more powerful, is a more powerful signal than the one in a range bound market. Support and resistance levels in supply and demand areas, like that's uh, these are all confluences we're looking at, right? So there's the trend, then there's support and resistance levels in supply and demand areas. These major levels have a significant importance in the market because all big participants watch these specific areas. Then the third aspect is moving averages. I personally use the 8 and the 21. You remember I mentioned some people use 2. So you can see now the author uses eight, the 8 moving average and the 21 moving average. This technical training 2x is a dynamic support and resistance, and it is very important factor of confluence in trending markets. Again, moving averages, they are only used when the markets are trending. If you try to use moving average on a ranging market, you will get confused or you have uh, most of your setups won't play out. All right. The Fibonacci retracement too. All right, uh, I use the 61% and 50% FIB retracement to find the most powerful areas in the market. So personally, I'm not a fan of the Fibonacci. I do use it sometimes, but it sort of confuses me. I won't lie on that one. So if you check even on my other videos, I, I rarely use the FIB. But I think uh, for people to understand, I'll just try to explain the basics on how I understand it. Because many people, uh, if you check, people use the FIB retracement in different ways. So you just have to do your own research, uh, check other YouTube videos, check other YouTubers, other traders, how they use them. Obviously, these people uh, who can explain way better than I'm doing, especially on the FIB. So do not hesitate to like go through YouTube, do your own research, and possibly you might actually understand it way better than I do. Okay. Uh, and it's also not a must to use the FIB. It's not like without the FIB, you won't be profitable. Already we've noticed that all the examples we're looking at, it's mainly once you know your trend, support and resistance, you're good. Moving average is an added uh, advantage. And FIB retracement too is also an added advantage. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, then there's trend lines. I'm also not a big fan of trend lines. I do use them sometimes just to wait for breaks. So I also try to give you guys examples of how I use trend lines, trend lines, but I'm not big on them. But again, it differs from person to person. There are traders who specifically use only trend lines, right? They they don't even use moving averages. They just look at trend lines and, uh, of course, other influences, the confluences, and uh, they execute their trades. But I'll also try to show you those examples when we slide down to the chart. All right, so trend lines. Drawing these lines on your charts gives you uh, an idea about the market direction and it helps us find the most important reversal points in the market. When you are analyzing your chart, you are not obligated to find all these levels to determine whether the trade is valid or not. Okay, so don't beat yourself up if you feel like you cannot see the trend lines because you can still be profitable without them. All right. If you can find just one or two factors of confluence that come up together with a good pin bar setup, this is quite enough to make a profitable trade. For example, an obvious pin bar signal near support and resistance level in line with the direction of the market, uh, the example is below. So if you see here, we are now in an uptrend. That's the first thing we see when we come to this chart. Right? We are in an uptrend. It's a higher time frame. Uh, sorry about that. We are in an uptrend. It's a higher time frame, right? We've broken a zone here. So that means this was actually a resistance broken. It's now support. So if this was me on this chart, I would look at this as a pin bar to buy. I won't lie to you. This, if it lines up with something, I will take it. But if it does not line up with anything, I do not trade. Right. So, for example, this was actually lining up with what? With this zone, with our support zone. So, taking that trade, there's literally nothing wrong with executing your trade here. Right. Because your stop loss comes here, right? 
So let's say you execute, you trade moves, 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 it hits stop loss. Okay, it's fine. If it hits stop loss, let's say you've lost 1% of your account or whatever percentage, depending on what you're risking. What happens after that? You'll see that price comes back to the support zone, meets the moving average, hits you with another pin bar. Okay, you get back in again, right? You are back into the trade, you enter, stop loss is below. From there, what did price do? They just like went way up. So now you end up maybe with like five, six percent in profits. The loss is already recovered and you still end uh, with net positive. Okay. So this is just an example of a pin bar on a support. So it's on a support level, it's on the 21 moving average. These are the confluences we're talking about. All right. So I hope that's clear as well. Do it in trading, you are actually supposed to have many mistakes. When you have losses, what I can advise is do not feel bad because you've lost a trade. Do not feel bad because you've lost money. You we we have you are actually encouraged to lose so that you learn. Because if you execute your trade here, right there, and it hits loss, you have to question yourself, okay, let me wait. It doesn't mean you're wrong. Of course, the trade was a loss. If it was uh, a calculated loss, it's okay because emotionally you were ready for it. All right, then you get another chance to enter the market, then you enter without fail. If you enter the market, do not stress, do not go too far away from the charts. Simply do the same thing. You can set your, 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 your what do you call it? Your, your alert right near the support zone again. Uh, or you can set an alert just above the pin bar. In case you are skeptical about entering again, just wait for price to come back here. Then you can still enter the trade because it's, it's still valid. Okay. This is more like mentorship stuff and you're just getting it for free, guys. So please make sure of this information and apply it on anything you trade. It's not limited to currencies. You see here we're talking about currencies, but the examples I'm showing you, they're on volatility indices. As long as your chart is got candlesticks, same thing. Apply the same knowledge, same information. So in the example above, we have a high probability setup with four factors of confluence. There is the trend, the level, the signal, another signal. So let me just check what uh, signals they're talking about because we've got a pin bar. Okay, let me just read. Okay, the trend, the market is trending up, which means that we have to follow the trend and look for buys. The, the level, the support level is an important key level in the market. As you can see, price broke out of the resistance level. That becomes support and pulled back to it. The formation of the bullish pin bar after the retracement back to the resistance level, that becomes support. That's your signal. Another signal, the rejection of the pin bar from the support level and the 21 moving average, that acted as a dynamic support. All these factors work together to give us a powerful trading signal to buy the market. Okay, another example. Price is coming up, we've broken, or here they use the FIB. So I'll go to the charts, try to draw the FIB for you, try to explain how it works. Okay, so pin bar signal, so you've broken. Once you break a high, it's a clue that you're in, in an uptrend. If price is trading above a moving average, it's also a clue that you're in an uptrend. If price is trading below a moving average, it's a clue that you're in a downtrend. Those are some of the things you need to know. All right, so once you figure out that you're in an uptrend, you wait for your signal, right? If you're putting alerts, you put your alerts near your support zone. As soon as price hits here, you get your alert, you jump onto the charts, you see what's up. All right, so on this particular example, price pulls into our zone, hits us with a pin bar on a support zone, right? Um, on a moving average as well. These are all confluences lining up. You'll be taking your confluences, price is on a moving average, you take it's on a 50 or 61 FIB level, you tick. Then you enter soon as uh, the pin bar closes. So you can either be aggressive with it or you can be conservative with it. That's, that's up to you. Then you execute it. You trade, you see the trade just played out. And again, they came, they hit a pin bar here. You can see right on a moving average. On this particular setup, there is no support zone here. But remember, 
the moving average is your dynamic support and resistance. So once we hit a pin buy, you still have executed your trade there. Uh, you execute your buy, it can be aggressive, it can be conservative. Stop loss goes below the pin bar. Then you map out one is to three, one is to four, one is to five, or the next zone is your target. Then you execute. All right. Uh, the example below shows four confluence levels that indicate a powerful trading signal. The first factor in the bullish trend and the second one is the resistance level that becomes support. The third one is the 21 moving average that acts as a dynamic support level. And the last factor is the pin bar formation near these levels in line with the bullish trend. I don't know why they say the example below since it's above, but anyways. If you adopt this trading concept, you completely change the way you perceive the market and you start trading like a sniper by waiting for the best setups to come to you instead of trying hard to make trades happen. Okay, so this is what pin bar trade examples. Okay, when we resume, we're going to resume from page 100. Uh, I feel like with the fibs, I'll explain the fibs on the next session when I come through. Before we start, I'll just start it with the Fibonacci retracement tool so that I can properly explain it as the video starts and you guys can understand how to use it. So I hope uh this page is we read today i hope you can just back test use them um revise all over again countless times until you get it right i hope it helps you if you still have questions that you just hit me up on the comment section uh if if i don't respond probably somebody in the admin will still respond uh we can even have like zoom sessions one-on-one -on -one. uh some sessions are free some sessions are, are premium but most of the things I just try to give up free information because we are here to help each, each other. You might know something which I don't know. Then we just meet, we share information. At the end of the day, it's a win-win situation for all of us. So I hope this helps. Uh, please do share the link or the video with somebody who knows struggling or somebody whom you know might actually make use of this information. So we are about two thirds of the way into the book. When we come back, we're going to resume from page 100 and we're going to start off with the FIBs and with a chart explanation of how to use FIBs, how to draw your Fibonacci retracement or how to use your Fibonacci retracement tool on your chart. We'll just start off from there. So thank you so much, guys, for your time. God bless you.